Okay, first part of this um, project, I've this is um, a straight drawing that the person did for me. Um, so basically, all I do is I photocopied the original and um, I now use this as a template. All I'm doing, I'm not going to be able to to go through this step by step. It, this project's just too big. This box is quite big. Um, but basically I always glue the template onto the wood and I will go now and I have to decide on the outline of the project um, I shall do quite a thick outline round here and um, this helps with the cutting of the box um, I'm going to put you on time lapse um, for the the next parts anyway um, this video will mostly be time lapse I will try and explain some of the things as I get into a bit more detail but anyway I shall uh, pop you on time lapse and you can watch from there Okay, <clears throat> just cut the box out, actually it was a couple of days ago, I'm just coming back from that. So that's the outline of the box cut. Um, I just used a 1 8 inch blade to cut it and as you've seen on the bandsaw, pretty straightforward. With oak it's such a, a heavy strong wood that you, the bandsaw, well my bandsaw, yeah, I need to take it easy going through, make sure I get my curves right. If I get anything, if I get the curves wrong at some moment, then it will actually jam up and stop it and I'll need to pull the blade back and redo it. But um, that's it cut out. Now, this oak is only about three inches, I think, thick. Uh, I don't have a... But it's about three inches, so... Oh, there we go. Yeah, just under three inches. Um, so that would be my normal size for cutting boxes so I didn't want to cut the back off this box so an oak blends quite well um, I found in the past I ma managed to buy this in a great big slab and it's bought locally it's a, a local felled tree from this area and it's been dried this wood um, so and three inches is about the maximum that you'll get people that that are drying it it's very rarely you see four inch Sometimes I do, with a Douglas fir more so. So, um, so this is three inches, so I wanted a back for it. I managed to get hold of somebody else local um, the other day. I needed a slab of around about one inch thick for a back. Now you think, yeah, it's on a different piece of wood, but it does actually blend quite well, oak. Um, yeah, the grain won't be all perfect in together. I'm not, not too worried about that at all, as I've done oak in the past. Like I say, it blends well, so I'm not too bothered. So I managed to get hold of um, a beautiful slab, which would have made a beautiful table. And it was a little bit bigger than this. So I managed to get two backs for boxes cut off that already. Uh, and I just quickly outlined the box. So it's a beautiful bit of wood, this. Lovely and he planed the one side for me already so um, I, I just got the slab and used the shaping obviously I drew round it before I cut it before you start cutting into the boxes because the minute you start cutting into the boxes the edges start to change on it so you're, you, you don't get the same fit a um, bit like I, know, I can't show you that one because the boxes are all out of them but yeah, so the shape will start to change on that the minute I uh, I start to take all this off. So I've cut the back out of a base, and now it's it's a good thickness. It's a bit a little bit thicker the the back than I would normally do, but I'm not going to change it. They look nice and chunky, and I can get some nice round edges on it. So it's just under four inches now, and you'll get good curves on that when I, when it comes to sanding it. Um, so that's where we are now. I'm going to go. Now, and it's all going to be on time lapse for yourself. I'm going to go away, cut the outside of the box, and cut all the inner boxes. Um, it takes quite a little while to do all of that, and that's why I'm doing it on time lapse. Because 
the majority of the work in this box will be after all the boxes and everything are done because um, this um, the tree trunk here the way she's drawn it it's got quite a lot it's Danuta and thank you very much for, for doing this because uh, I really appreciate having um, a one-off box um, it would be very different from what I've already got but anyway uh, I digress so there's quite a lot of figure in the the tree trunk that she's done and I'm hoping to maybe try and do that through maybe a bit of wood burning and maybe getting some wood with a little bit of character in it to emphasize that because that goes on after it's raised above the box area that so that the box is set back so it looks like the trees outstanding but anyway um so that's where I'm going to go next because I'll do a lot more explaining as we get into the other bits on how I've done them so anyway hope you're enjoying and hopefully this won't be too long I can see it being a little bit longer than I'd want it to be but um, I'll try and use a time lapse to keep the time down all right thanks for watching Okay, that's all the boxes um, cut out and that's the, the bare shell of the tree now. I just wanted to explain a couple of bits. You've probably seen that over there as well. Probably seen, I'd, I've actually had stopped the video a few times purely because of the dust, oak, tremendous amount of dust. Um, but I've marked these bits on here. These bits, these areas are not big enough for a box and in fact I've got probably two or three in here that I don't know what I'm going to do with because they won't really fit a box but we'll figure out something to do with those bits they're a bit small but um, I was just marking these areas there'll be a couple more here um, because then I will cut these bits out because when I do the top bit which you'll see I use this as a guide for the wood that I put on top of this so that those sit down below um, but yeah that's the, the boxes cut out. I'll need to mark them now to cut the front and the back off each one. I might not do that with these. I might um, put a couple of inserts inside it just for rings maybe. I don't know. I'll have to have a think about that. I'm not quite sure what to do with them. And that one will be the same. Um, but the rest of them, they will we'll cut cut down to a box there'll be small some of them but they, they'll still be an actual box so anyway um, I'll go off and mark all these up and um, I'll do a time lapse of me cutting the backs of the boxes off and cutting the inside of the boxes and I'll come back when I'm ready for glue up
Okay. <clears throat> I'll try and show you this. So, obviously all the boxes are now cut out. Um, each box has a, a front and a back, which is what I cut off. I take those to the bench sander and I sand them flat so that you get a nice good contact ready for the glue. Um, sorry, keep putting out the camera. So I've done that, so make sure you sand those bits. The next thing I do is I place them into the box. Um, this is how, just how I do it. I place these into the box and imagine it's standing upright and I then mark the lines for the cutting, like on this one I did that. I just put a simple line in there. For these bigger boxes, it's fine cutting on the bandsaw. You've got a bit of space to move your fingers around. For some of the smaller ones that I have, the likes of this one here, these are tiny and you're really risking it because it would only take it to slice through there and your finger will be gone. But <clears throat> the likes of small ones like that, I use pieces of wood and I use hot glue. So I would put that in because you want it at an angle that's not going to be cut in. So I would possibly put it there and then hot glue it. And then that would basically hold it um, going round. You could then use another piece of wood, say here, just to help um, directing the piece round the bandsaw blade. Um, so whatever you do on these boxes, don't cut. It's not worth the risk. You only get one set of fingers and you've got to be really careful. Um, I just wanted to go over that. I'm going to go away and cut all the inserts of the, the boxes out. This could be quite time consuming because by the time I hot glue them in and take them out, so I'm not going to do it during the time lapse. The next bit I'll come back is when the boxes are all cut and we're ready to glue up, okay. Okay, so that's all the... <coughs> nothing to see there really but that's all the little boxes cut into shape um, now it comes to the gluing so I'm just so I use tight bond uh, it doesn't matter which the I think I've used the ultimate as well um, it's indoor use so I just like this it glues really fast when you when you put it on really within five minutes um, it's got a good tack so you know it's not going to move around and stuff anymore then. Um, so I just tend to use that, plus it's in a small, easy use container. Um, with the, uh, I mean, it's, some of these are tiny, tiny. Let me get this one here. What does it do with that? I mean, this is a tiny, tiny drawer. I did actually manage to cut all the drawers. Um, and you, you're not going to be fitting much in there. Um, maybe a couple of pairs of earrings, small ones. <laughs> but anyway, with the glue up on this now, you'll notice as well, this is oak and sometimes you get the chip out at the back. You'll get the odd bit because the grain's quite big on it. Um, it does glue back in really easy, but when it's a back of a box, I don't tend to worry too much. So, as I say, I sanded these, so... They should meet not too bad when they glue up. And all I basically do is dab a little bit of glue on it, rub it in with my finger, pop it in place, do both at the same time and with a little one like this, so just use a clamp, just a, one clamp, just to hold it. After about half an hour you'd be able to take the clamp off and use it for the next one. Um, so I'm going to go ahead now and glue all these boxes up um, and get them ready for um, which is the next stage which is just sanding off the edges and stuff. <coughs> right, we're back. I've given you a different view actually. The camera's outside the workshop here. This workshop's only 10 foot by 7 foot and uh, when it comes to doing the boxes I quite like to have all my equipment around me so that I can just get on and get stuff done. I don't have electrics fitted in here, it's something I desperately need and I'm going to need to consider it at some point. So I wanted to just give you an overview of what I do. I'm now going on to sand the boxes. Um, I'm not going to record the sanding of the boxes 
I'm just going to show you basically the equipment that I use because there's, <coughs> there's wires and everything in here. I use, um, I'm actually going to grab that camera in a second and just take it around and show you everything and then we'll get to having a look at the boxes and then I'll come back once I've sanded them all. Right, let me grab this. So the first one that we've got here is, um, I use this little drum sander here and these are quite cheap, they're only about £10 on Amazon. Um, it's 120 grit I've got in there. I then have uh, this bench sander, um, I think it's 120 grit I've got on there as well. I then have an oscillating sander. I use all of these for each drawer. Well, on most of them, um, which obviously has different sizes on it there. So this is a, a great handy little tool. Now, here's the boxes here. Um, obviously, I haven't built the workbench yet. Got all the stuff to build it and haven't built it yet um, because it's ones that go off these units. But I still need to actually put the drawers on the units, that's these units here, because the drawers are not all in place. So um, I've just sanded this one here, and obviously we're not doing a video on that one, it's this one here, but um, let me see if I can lift this up, get some of these out. Okay, so as an example, on this box I use, sorry spinning it around, do the flat sides on here. I then do all the large curves on the drum sander there and then I use the oscillating sander to get all into the fine edges depending on what size. Do you need all that? No, you don't. Um, the bench sander is particularly handy for the flat sides um, and the drum sander. If you've got those two things that's all you need. It was only um, a short while ago that I got the oscillating sander. Um, I think it was last year I got the oscillating sander just to try and save me some time, really. But I used to do all that with hand, by hand sanding. And basically I just curl a piece of sandpaper up into a curve and just rub along the edges. It only actually takes a couple of minutes to do it. The insides of the boxes, um, they're pretty smooth after the cutting of them, but I just give them a rub over with something like a 600 before I sand seal and then a 600 after the, the and I don't I don't tend to line the boxes anymore the inside of the boxes because when you're using um, I mean this is oak and when you're using nice woods I think it's a shame sometimes to to cover those if um, I had a particular customer that asked me to do it then I would line them with suede text which is just flocking uh, so right so I'm not going to go into any more detail with this um, I'm going to get on and get all of these sanded and then I'll come back when I'm starting to sand seal okay I've given uh, I've got that two boxes drawers on here but I've given uh, them the first coat of sand sealer doing it outside today because uh, the weather's so good and this stuff really smells this is 50 50 cellulose thinners and i use chestnut sand sealer um, i buy the great big containers of it so uh, i just pour it into a little coffee jar and use it there so that's the first coat um, raises the grain up a bit so i'll go ahead and just give it a wipe over with um, a 600 grit and then I'll give a second coat and I use a varnish this is the varnish I use it's just uh, car varnish I don't do it to shine I just give a coat just to protect really so it's virtually one coat over um, a sand back with 600 and then a second coat just to finish um, but very light coats I use on it and um, it's just a very very light spray because I don't like them to be too shiny um, 
So I'll crack on and get all the drawers done and uh, then we'll look at the main box. Okay, just wanted to run over what I'm doing next. Um, all the drawers have been sand sealed and finished. So that part is completely done. Um, the most technical part really comes down to the box. Um, so this box obviously is not glued. I've just got a back there. And we've got the... I'll take, take that out a bit off because we no longer need that on there. We then have the outer box here, which because I've... When once I cut a box, um, I actually wrap it in tape until I'm ready to start gluing it up. And um, that way, it keeps its shape a little bit better and keeps it nice and tight in, which is really what you need. Um, so we have an outer part of the box here now, which is nice and tightly on there. That off. Right, that's the outer part of the box. I just took the um, the edges off there, it's not very good for you, hold on, let me move this back. There we go, that's better. Um, I just uh, give a light sand to this inner edge here. And obviously this part of the wood here has not been touched yet, I haven't done any sanding. I will now give this a light sand over just to take that top part off do any glue ups for any um, slight splits in the wood. As I say, this wood was, was did have a few discrepancies in when I cut it. Um, but I will just put a bit of super glue in there and rub in uh, a few of the, the remnants of the sand in, a bit of the sawdust. Um, but I will now sand this, this off top, at the top down to the bare wood and I will curve in this outer edge before I go and do anything else. I will then, right, let me get this back in place, All right, put that on, I will then glue um, the whole of this onto the base and I will leave it probably 24 hours. Now this bit can come off now, um, the reason I use a sellotape on the top is because it is so much easier if you can keep this transfer bit at the top complete because we will need this bit for when we start to cut out um, I'm not going to pull it off just now until I've got a bit more time but we will need that to prepare the wood for the top of this because this box is a bit like 3D um, this part stays at this level and will be glued down and sanded that part will then be complete this part here I then um, place this out onto to, well, some nice figured wood really that I can get some of the running features of um, the wood for this 3D bit and then I shape it. But I always cut it out, um, if you've ever heard of intarsia, intarsia is like when, when you're placing intarsia on, you sand the edges over but they're joining to make a whole picture but the grooves sort of give you a sort of a look like that, that, that's on different levels I'm not that sure I'm explaining it that well but anyway I do it like that basically I will place this onto some nice figured wood I should probably try to get the grain running the way that these would be running and um, then at each interval you know I'll, I'll cut the first bit out it'll only be about that long and then I'll sand down the edges that would be glued into place and then I'll go on to the next bit and that's how I work it. These bits in here that you can see um, that I've got the blue line round, I don't want those um, raised up at all because I want the branches to, to be sitting like that. So these branches will come up and around here, but it will sit back there. But they were too small to make boxes with, but that doesn't matter. So the next part really that I'm going to do now is I'll, I'll take this um, template off and put it to one side I shall sand the outer box here and I'm going to glue it all together and then we'll come back and I'll explain a little bit more with how I'm going to do this bit. Okay, that's the um, back glued onto the box. You see there's a slight little ridge there just where it's a little bit bigger. Um, 
So that needs to all be sanded back now. This whole box will be sanded and completed ready for the next part now. There is a couple of areas where it's uh, not perfectly in there. I'm not too worried about that. There seemed to be a little bit of bow. It could have been with the heat yesterday as well. Um, I should probably just give that a little bit of glue for maybe an hour or so and before I sand it back, um, curve the edges um, here um, so that that finishes. Now this is actually flush. Um, I gave that um, a little sand back but I'm not too worried about it because the whole of the inner tree is actually covered and um, the next bit will come back now is I'll show you about me starting to prepare all the cuts for this. Okay, um, next stage now. I've done all the sanding to the back of this box, give it a, a curved edge. I'm quite pleased with how that's come out. Obviously it's still unfinished here. Um, so now what we have to do using a template, we'll find that template. Using the template now, I go ahead and cut pieces of wood out. Now I found this bit of some sort of exotic burr. I'm not even sure what it is. I think I might be able to find out what it is. So I'll let you know what the name of that is when I find out. And I'm going to have a go at maybe... There's another bit of it here. I think it's the same type of stuff. Could be wrong. Could be a red melly bear that. Actually, I think that's red melly bear. Anyway, I thought about cutting this down. I'm thinking about half inch strips. And then what I do with the half inch strips is I then find the angles that I want um, these stems to come out on and um, cut into it. Um, I place it on. I will be cutting this down a little bit first. Um, the whole of this stem will be a, in a one most of that. Um, in the hope that we can fit it all on here. We will try and arrange it so that I can get one full stem out of this piece. Um, I think this will give us a nice bit of figure in it. You want something that's going to maybe stand out a little bit on the top of this box. And I think this could give me that. So anyway, I'm going to go away and um, I'm going to sand it down, get it into slices. And then we'll come back and I'll show you what I'm doing. I do think that's red melly burr. Okay, that's me cut them into roughly about half inch slices. Um, these are all going to be shaped, so I wanted to start off with something a little bit bigger, and plus, I want it to be a real feature on this box. Um, so that's why I've started like that. I'm just going to bring this over. So now, anyway, I'll cut this down to the individual parts I want and I will use a stick and spray and I will attach it to these pieces of wood until I get it looking really as I want to. I'm not going to go into too much detail about this because this it's hours of explaining some of it. Um, I've decided with the box handles I'm going to use extra branches coming off. So I also um, need to take some consideration into that at the same time. So um, I should be doing that too as I, as I cut them down. I'm going to put this onto a time lapse, me cutting this and getting it onto here. And uh, get these bits cut out. So basically I need to, to cut this down, put it onto here, but I'll do it in a time lapse.
Okay, that's all the little bits cut now. Um, the next part of that is starting to shape everything. And the way I'm going to work this one is I'm going to remove all the side bits here. And the first one I'm going to work on is the stem here. <clears throat> I'm going to get it fitting in as best as I can there. And then I'm going to start and shape it. Where these joins are here, I'll slope them down. And then the rest will just be rounded off. Once I've done that, I will glue it into place. And may, when I do put all of these on, I will adjust the shapes of these to fit into that one. So I'll pop it on time lapse. I'll go away and start shaping this one now. Okay, I've got the camera in my hand. Um, that's me. Um, got the edges curved and in place. It, the majority of this looks like it fits absolutely fine, but there will be edges on it that once it's glued in place, you will need to go back and shape so to make sure that there's no overlap. The drawers coming out. This uh, Melly Bird, I don't know if you can see that one on the camera, but boy, what beautiful figures in it. I think it will really complement this box. Um, it, it, I've left quite a lot of the thickness on this because um, I want it to stand out as the tree, really, as much as anything. Um, nice deep reds and that in there. I'm going to put this back on the pod, two seconds. I'm going to just rub a bit of sun sealer over it so we can have a look at it. It won't stay on there, it'll all end up being sanded off, but just so you can see a bit of the the colours of it really. Yeah, see that's beautiful. It works out beautiful for the bark of the tree. It'll be really the making of the box. So certainly happy with that. So we're happy with that anyway. Um, so really the next thing that I go on to do is I do exactly the same with all of the pieces. And I have to try and work out um, the fittings of it. So on some bits I'll start at the bottom here. And I'll put it on and see how far it's out. And then start to lightly sand the edges to make sure that it fits in there perfect. And then sand around these bits off, which I've got the Dremel to do that, so. But yeah, that, that's the, ne the next bit. Um, I'm not going to film it because this video is ending up being really, really long and I'm very conscious of losing your attention. So I'm going to go away ahead off camera and shape all of these bits um, ready to go in place. And... Um, I'll come back before I do the gluing up. 
Okay, I wanted to take this picture. It's just with the camera phone because I just wanted to see um, how it sits on top of the wood um, at this stage. Um, so obviously that's there. All the bits done now. Now some of these won't be perfectly fitting, but um, the way I go about things now is... Um, that I actually will glue the centre part and that in. Right, for the next bit I'm going to go on to the the main camera so I can show you what I mean. Right, so we've got all the bits cut and shaped and I'm not that sure on the look right at the second to be quite honest with you. Um, I'm not sure whether to try and smooth them out a little bit that way so that they line a little bit flatter So that might happen, but I'm not going to do anything like that at the minute. What I'm going to basically going to do is take all these bits off And I need to focus on the centerpiece I need to go back. I've, I've got to give a light sand in here because I was actually forgetting about when the woods on that we've got these gaps here, so I need to get that back to um this color so i'm going to go away and just give that um a little sanding down to get that and then <coughs> on this um i need to get this glued into place that's the next thing really because once i've glued it into place i'll be able to then start shaping making sure that the boxes have got plenty of room for moving out as you noticed i haven't done the handles yet i'm going to do the handles very last once i've got all this done and in place i will then start to add the handles um because i'm still not fully decided on what i'm doing there so i'm going to go i'm going to do all this off camera because i think i've got a massive amount of video already so i'm first of all i'm basically going to glue this bit this bit on and um, I'll use the Dremel tool just making sure that the shape gives room for the drawers coming out and each consecutive bit I will glue on and shape at the, at, at the same time. Um, so I'm not going to come back until this front part is completely done now and we're ready to move on to the, the drawers. Right, that's it. All glued in place. Um, I've sanded along the edges here to make sure the drawers fit in and out and I've also tested all the drawers on it. Um, I'm quite pleased with how it's looked. Originally I was going to look at some wood burning into here but I've decided because it's so highly figured that I'm not going to. Um, I'm going to sand seal this all now. Um, all the sanding's finished. Um, there's You'll see bits of ridges and stuff here. I'm not, I don't want to actually touch that. I want to um, just do it as it is. I it doesn't need to be perfect, this part. Um, and then I'll have a look and see what I think of it. I am quite pleased with the, with the look of it. Um, so anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go away and sun seal. I'm not going to put it onto camera and i'm going to come back when the box is finished because we're not quite obviously finished yet we've still got handles and i still need a base for it so i'm going to go away sand seal and finish the outer box and uh, then we'll come back and have a look where i go next okay that's the first coat the sand sealer done um nice reds and greens come out in that um, wood's looking really nice now a little bit damp we'll give it half an hour or so and then um, I'll give it a second coat and then I'll sand it with 600 after that that's the the box up to this stage finished it's been sand sealed and it's been rubbed down with a 600 and it's nice and smooth now it'll be ready for a uh, a light coat of lacquer just to go on top of it um, but the next thing I need to do now is sort out handles um, you always worry about the handles um, if you make it, the box look too cluttered which is something I'm quite conscious about not doing um, 
so I'm unsure what wood to use. I kept all the scrap wood from the Melly Bear, which I think is what it was in the end, um, in a thought of using that, but I'm unsure if it will just make it look too cluttered. I don't know. But anyway, what the next thing I need to do now is I need to do handles, but I'm going to do them as branches. So basically I'll just try and line something up and then draw the shape in it and cut out small ones and then glue them onto the the front of the box the box really and uh, we'll see how it goes from there anyway um, I'll come back when I've got all that bits finished and well we'll see if it looks too cluttered or not okay so we are coming up towards the end of this box now and obviously we have the box area. I've actually completed all the drawers with the little handles on but I'm not going to show you that until we've done it to the end. The next part that I need to do now, I mean this still needs to be varnished. Um, that's like a lacquer I put on it. But um, what the next bit I actually need to make sure that I get organised at this stage is the base. I'm going to use a bit of oak for a base here. It's just about, it's probably about three quarters of an inch thickness. And because there's one of the drawers here that's, uh, let me see if I can find the drawer for that one. No, don't have a clue where it is. Um, there is actually a drawer at the bottom here, so you can't leave that base just like that. Um, let me see that there. I'll need to put something on it um, for one to hold that drawer in place and two just for the decorative effect. So I've got this little bit of board and put this down. These boxes are quite heavy. I've just drawn an outline there. I, I basically just put it on there and I did a squiggly shape around it. Nothing fancy. I just wanted something that would you couldn't have something straight lined with this. I needed something to go with some of the curves that's already in it. And a good solid base for the finish of it. So I'm going to go away and cut that out. This is going to be really the last time I'll show you anything until the next one when we show it completed. I'm just going to away, cut that out, give it a sound, round off the edges, sand seal it, glue it, and then I'll complete all the varnishing at that point after that. So, uh, yeah, that's us. Just about done now. Uh, so the next one I've come to will be the final of it. Um, I hope you've enjoyed um, the video up until now. It's not very easy when, when the box is so big to go into too much detail. As I say, you would just be sitting watching me doing stuff. I'm just hoping that I'm giving you the ideas of how I'm achieving stuff. So, anyway, we'll be back with the, the final one. Alright, the final one. That's the box complete. I've, got, I've pulled you in as close as I can get you really to have a look at it. Um, lots of drawers come out quite nicely. And they slip in and out absolutely fine. There's no sticking areas on this. Sometimes you do find um, when you get to the end there'll be an odd sticking area. Um, the base is glued and a thin coat of varnish as you see I don't like a high shine on anything so um, I prefer to just leave it quite matte. I'm going to take this off the pod just so I can show you around it a bit, it's very heavy. Um, so that's the base there and you can sort of see um, the 3D effect of it. Let me find a drawer now, can't tell which ones are the drawers. view from me above it there. I'm just going to pop you back in the pod here. So that's it, yeah it is a tremendous weight in this. Um, just a clear bottom, I'll probably put some soft felt pads on the bottom um, just so that it doesn't 
scratch against any furniture or anything like that. But um, I'm very pleased with it. Now, I'm going to take you to a different angle so that I can speak to you face to face rather than just show you the box. So it's been several weeks since this project started. Um, I mean they're really big projects when you do start them. There's a lot of fiddly work, a lot of work you have to wait for, cutting, gluing, um, sanding, you know I showed you the, the different sanding methods and stuff that I use. So they're big projects and I wouldn't say this is definitely a beginner's project but if you feel like diving into something feel free if you but don't use expensive woods and stuff like that you know if you're just starting out because the biggest issue you'll find when you first start is cutting the shapes and stuff and um, you won't get them going smooth but you know don't don't let that stop you I the first box that I did was actually a competition winner in instructables and I won the DeWalt which you often see in the video because I use it the table bit of it um, and that was the first big box I'd done and it was a long time before I'd ever had a proper shed or anything like that. So there's no to say it can't be done. It definitely can be done. But there is a lot more work. Take your time. Don't rush. I never rush these boxes. I knew it would take me weeks to finish. Um, and that's why I don't always do boxes for you. I try and do a little bit of a mix of stuff. Because for one, there's a limited amount of boxes I, I produce really in a year. I mean... That's probably near a month ago I started this project. And although I've only had sort of one day a week, there's been gluing up at night. After, you know, I've got in from the shed, I go in and I'll do gluing and stuff like that in the house. Um, but, you know, there, you, there is a, a lot of work in it. But anyway, I digress. I hope you enjoyed this project. Um, go out there, have a go. Find any shapes. Draw a shape on a piece of paper practice on the bandsaw like I say most of everything of this has been done with a 1 8 inch you couldn't do some of the curves with anything bigger um, but then I'm just an amateur so maybe you can if you're an expert in bandsaws I'm not I'm just just it's just a hobbyist um, but anyway if you liked it please give me a thumbs up share it I would love this to get shared around a little bit because I don't see many people doing what I'm doing out there and the more times that it's shown and people see it the more people start doing it um, it's a great hobby so um, so yeah please feel free to share it I will put links in as well to um, my Facebook page um, you can comment on there or you can comment in the comments below um, if you've not seen me before subscribe and Thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed what I've done for you this time.